Hello, everyone, and a welcome to McCarriker State Park. My name is Kat, and today I'm here to teach you a little bit more about marine protected areas, what we call MPAs, and we're going to learn a little bit about the amazing marine mammals that use these areas as their home. So first of all, again, my name is Kat. I'm in McCarriker State Park, and I want to thank you for being a part of this ports program. If you end up liking our programs, please make sure to visit the website, P-O-R-T-S-C-A.U-S, so you can sign up for more fun programs. And by fun, I definitely mean that today, we're going to get a little bit silly. Today, we're going to do our learning in a way that I hope will make you laugh. I hope it will make you smile, and I hope that you're going to learn something new. So to make sure that we remember everything that we learned today, I need you to just grab a couple of things. I want to make sure that you have a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper so that we can jot down notes or maybe even draw pictures about the things we're learning about today. Now, I had said before, an MPA, Marine Protected Areas, that's a big part of what we're learning about today because it's not just any Monday. Today is an MPA Monday, and that is a reason to celebrate these amazing areas. But let's break it down just a little bit. What is a Marine Protected Area? Well, let's look at just the words, marine. That means underwater. We're having to do with the ocean. Protected, something that we guard from harm, something we safeguard, we keep it safe. And an area means a chunk of land, that has some borders. Let's put that all back together again. So that means we're gonna be learning about a chunk of land that is underwater that we protect from harm. MPAs are important because they protect the plants and the animals that live there. And in fact, McCarriker State Park is right on the edge of an MPA. And we have some truly amazing life that depends on this area, that depends on the biodiversity, that depends on the fish and the kelp that we protect there. Another very exciting fact is that there are 124 MPAs along our coast. In fact, California has the largest network of MPAs in the world. And that's why we celebrate our MPA Mondays. Just these areas are so important, especially for marine mammals. Marine mammals, like the one you see behind me, go ahead and take a wild guess what this guy is. What do you think? Write that down on your paper. What kind of marine mammal do you think this is? Hmm, that's a tough one. This marine mammal is a whale. So if you wrote down whale, you got that absolutely right. Let's think of some other marine mammals. Hmm. There are otters, dolphins, whales, sea lions, and the one we're really going to talk about today, my friend, the harbor seal. There we go. This is my friend, the harbor seal. And this is really who we're going to focus on today because at McCarricker State Park, our harbor seals live in our MPA, where we protect the fish and the kelp, where we keep their home wild and natural. These are some really incredible animals. Now, 
had mentioned that these are called marine mammals. We already talked about what marine means, but let's go over what a mammal is. Take a moment and point right now to a mammal. I promise you don't have to look very far. You could be pointing at me through the screen. You could be pointing at you or maybe a cat or a dog, these are all mammals. And there are five big characteristics that all mammals have. And this is why I want you to have that piece of paper ready. We're gonna write those five big characteristics down. Number one, all mammals, even whales, have, not hats, we have, we have hair. Absolutely, even whales. Number two, I guarantee you're doing it right now. All mammals. <sighs> all mammals breathe air. Very good. Number three, all mammals have the ability to maintain our own body temperature. We're not like a lizard that needs to go lay out in the sun to be able to raise our body temperature to survive. We create our own heat. Your big fancy word for that is endothermic. Big, hard, fancy word, but I know you're smart. Number four, mammals don't lay eggs. Mammals give birth to live babies even the really big ones that live in the water. We all give birth to live babies. And our last, our last one is we feed our babies. What do we feed them? We feed them milk. Absolutely. So hair, air, body temperature, live birth, feed our babies milk. That's gonna be your big five. And the important part, about knowing these five is that as we're talking about marine mammals, these animals that live in the ocean day and night, in the cold waters, through the crashing waves, running from predators and running again to get food. Well, I guess I should say swimming to get food and swimming from their predators. They all have the same needs and qualities that a human does. How do they do it? How do they survive? That's when we come up to our next big fancy word, adaptations. Go ahead and say that with me, adaptations. And adaptation is an inherited trait, either behavioral or physical, that helps a plant or animal survive. That's kind of a really long definition. So let's just focus on a little portion of that. Let's just focus on physical adaptations, the physical traits that help a marine mammal survive in the cold ocean. Specifically today, we're gonna talk about harbor seal adaptation. Now, as much as I love my buddy here, I think it would help if we had a real photo of a harbor seal that we could look at. Let me go ahead and pull one up for us. There we go. There's one of our harbor seal friends. Take a good hard look because we're gonna go through all these different parts of a harbor seal and how it helps them survive. Very good. How we're gonna do that is the silly part. Today, I am going to put on a harbor seal costume 
piece by piece so we can learn about how each part of a harbor seal, each physical adaptation helps them survive. And it is very silly. So please feel free to smile, feel free to laugh. It's MPA Monday after all. We have to celebrate one way or another. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me go ahead, I'm gonna... All right, now our first piece of the harbor seal that we really need to know about is how they blend in. There's a big word that begins with a C that means how animals blend in. I bet you know it. It is camouflage. Absolutely, if you said camouflage, you are absolutely correct. Now our harbor seal, like you had seen from the photo, has nice gray speckled fur or hair. Remember, that's one of our five big um, marine mammal pieces. They have fur and that fur helps them camouflage. So I'm gonna go ahead as I am turning into a harbor seal, I better put on my camouflage because this is what helps me hide from predators. So I can go ahead and go sunbathe on the rocks and not have to worry about a predator attacking me. Now this fur isn't very thick and the ocean is very, very cold. How do I stay warm? What do you think my next piece would be? How does a marine mammal stay warm? They stay warm with a big layer of fat that we call blubber. Go ahead and say that with me. It's one of my favorite words, blubber. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my blubber. Oh, there we go. Now I have a nice big thick layer of blubber to keep me warm as I am swimming around in the Carriker State Park, maybe when I'm hunting in my MPA. Very good, blubber. Hmm, I don't quite feel like a harbor seal yet. Because harbor seal, in order to swim really fast, to catch their fish, need to be very streamlined. Human necks are a little different. You see how we have all these shapes? That doesn't work super well in the water, especially not for marine mammals. So I need to take my neck and bring it out to here. Don't worry, I know just the thing. And it even still has all those nice spots to help me blend in. There we go. All right, now I'm a little bit more streamlined but not quite streamlined enough. Go ahead and bring your hands up to your ears. You feel, you feel how they come outside of our body? Let's take a look at my harbor seal friend one more time. Let's see if they have that. Do we see any external ear flaps coming off the harbor seal? No, we don't. So if I'm gonna survive as a harbor seal out in the ocean swimming to go get my prey, I'm gonna need to cover up my external ear flaps. Okay. There we go. See how we're getting more of that nice streamlined shape? My next piece. Harbor seals have fingers. Do they have these big, long arms for splashing and swimming around? No. No, harbor seals have a different kind of adaptation to survive in their world and their habitat. They have 
flippers. And not just harbor seals have these kinds of flippers. Actually, they're very, very similar to a whale's flippers. So let's go take a look at the flippers on this whale I'm standing by. There we go. So that is a very big version of the same kind of flippers a harbor seal has, but on a totally different marine mammal. Do you see any kind of similarity between that front flipper of a whale and a human hand? Go ahead and look at your hand and then compare that to the bones of this front flipper. Yeah, almost looks like they have fingers. And that's all covered up by the flipper. And it helps it stay rigid. It helps it swim. Very good. Now I better get my flippers on. Otherwise, I will not be able to swim very fast to catch my prey. Let me go ahead and reconnect here. There we go. All right. Now. Harbor seal flippers look a little bit like oven mitts. They do, but you'll notice there's something else on here. Harbor seals actually have claws. They do, they have claws, like how we have fingernails. It helps us scratch. It helps them defend themselves. So it's very important as a harbor seal that I have my flippers. Hmm. I'm missing a couple more pieces to truly be a good harbor seal. What do you think it is? <laughs> I'm seeing lots of raised hands. I bet you know the answer. I need to start changing the face. Let's take another look at my friend here. Harbor seals have those nice, big, dark eyes. And it helps them see in murky, dark, cold ocean water. I don't think my little human eyes are gonna cut it, so I gotta get on my big harbor seal eyes. There we go. Now I have my big, dark harbor seal eyes so I can see see where all my food is. We're coming up to the very last piece of the harbor seal costume. Harbor seals are carnivores. They eat meat, just like humans do, but harbor seals only eat meat. They like to eat fish and crab and octopus. And in order to be able to catch their prey, they need, let me put my eyes back on, I won't be able to catch my prey if I can't see it. They need excuse me, I'm sorry. They need very big, very sharp teeth. Now there's a couple other things that you probably notice about this last piece. Not only do they have those nice big sharp teeth to catch their prey, they have whiskers. And these whiskers actually help them feel vibrations in the water. And it can also help them find their food. And the last thing you might've noticed is these nose slits. Hmm. Harbor seal have the amazing ability to actually be able to close their nostrils. Go ahead and try to do that without touching your face. Uh, humans don't really have that ability, but harbor seals, through the power of adaptation, do. So, without further ado, we finish turning a human into a harbor seal.
Ta-da! Let me step back so you can see I have my blubber. It's hard to talk with this thing. I have my blubber. I have my streamlined body shape, my flippers, my big dark eyes, no external ear flaps, and I have my big sharp teeth. Ah, oh, thank you everybody. That was so much fun. Now, while I'm transforming back into a human, I would like for you to either write down on your piece of paper or talk with someone close to you about something that is the same between a harbor seal and a human and something that's different. So let's, let's examine those similarities and those differences. I'm gonna step off camera to turn human again, but make sure you're thinking about those similarities and those differences. And while you're doing that, let's go ahead and pull up that photo of that harbor seal we looked at before. Now, so we're looking for similarities and we're looking for differences. Hmm. Now similarities are going to be the things that are the same and differences is what sets us apart. All right, I am back and officially human again. Let's go ahead. Let's talk about those similarities and differences. Some things that are the same between harbor seals and humans. We both have two eyes, two ears, two nostrils. Those front flippers are very similar to hands. They're mammals, just like we are. They just live in a different habitat. I wonder if you wrote down another similarity that I didn't even think of. Hmm. Now let's talk about those differences. What sets us apart? We don't have camouflage fur like a harbor seal. We don't have all sharp teeth like a harbor seal. We have some sharp teeth, but not all. A lot of our hair is concentrated on our head as a human, but it's spread out all over for harbor seals. You guys did a wonderful job. Now, talking about harbor seals is amazing because our marine protected areas help them live in a beautiful natural home. Now, let's do a little thought experiment together. I want you to take a second and think. If we didn't have our MPAs, our marine protected areas, to protect this kind of habitat, this kind of biodiversity. If all the fish were taken out of the area, if there was no more kelp for the harbor seals to swim around in, to escape predators in, if we didn't have any of that, what do you think would happen to harbor seals? Hmm. Take a moment just to, just to imagine. If they didn't have the resources that an MPA can provide, what would happen? Go ahead and jot down your ideas on your paper, maybe even draw a picture, or talk to the person sitting next to you. What do you think would happen? Now I know everyone's answer is gonna be a little bit different. Maybe our answers are the harbor seals wouldn't have anything to eat. They might not survive. Maybe the harbor seals would just up and move right out of the park. What if they move to an even more dangerous area? 
maybe they wouldn't have as many pups or as many babies because there isn't food or protection. These are some pretty sad things to think about, which is why it is so important for us to celebrate our MPAs today on MPA Monday. It's important for us to learn about these incredible resources that help our Harbor Seal friends because they're so well adapted to live there. We don't wanna change how they live or where they live. So just one more thought experiment for us today. What do you think you can do to help our MPAs, to help our ocean, to help our harbor seals? What do you think you can do? Go ahead and draw a picture or write it down or tell the person next to you, what can you do to help? And even if you don't live by the ocean, I promise there are still things that you can do. Wonderful. So a couple of things that we can do to help our harbor seal friends, to help marine mammals in marine protected areas, to help our ocean. We can use the big three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle, when it comes to plastics. So we make sure that our marine protected areas and our marine mammals aren't exposed to any kind of trash. We can also pick up garbage whenever we see it. Even if you live far away from the ocean, all of our creeks and rivers and streams all eventually lead back to the ocean. So even if you're far away from this marine protected area, you can still help by picking up trash. We can make sure to walk or ride our bike whenever we have a chance so that we're not contributing to climate change anymore. I wonder if you thought of something that I didn't. I'm sure you're all a wonderfully creative bunch. And if you did think of something that I didn't, let me know. We have a Facebook page out here from McCarricker State Park. It's ca.sp Mendocino. Let me know if you thought of anything that I didn't about how to help our marine protected areas and how to help our marine mammals. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in today. Thank you for celebrating MPA Monday with me. I wanna make sure from all of us here at the California State Parks that you're staying safe, you're staying happy, and you are staying healthy. Make sure to follow Port for more information and more fun lessons to come. Happy MPA Monday, everyone. Again, my name is Kat, and thank you for inviting McCarricker State Park into your home today. <laughs>